You're listening to the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy, and we are happy to be back for another episode. Um, we begin our episodes by saying, Jesus, make and, and humble, humble of heart, heart make our hearts like, like unto thine. thine. So if you're a new listener here, welcome to the podcast. Um, this is a weekly podcast here on the Catholic Family Podcast, where we discuss um, current things that pertain to women. And as well, we also um, are reading through the mission and duties of young women. So each week we read a little bit of our chapter. And um, But if you're a returning um, I always want to say subscriber, listener, Listeners. Um, welcome back and welcome uh, back. happy to be back for another week. Mm-hmm. And we had a great weekend. We, we yeah. did. We did. We, we did. <laughs> we did. I had, took a minute. I, I, I had to what? think about what was our great weekend about. Yeah. We had a bunch of first communicants. Yes. Yes. So, and I noticed on Facebook too, a, a lot of first communions Get, going on last weekend. Last weekend. Yeah. Seems to right be all the over. weekend I that had, they do it. I had two, uh, grandchildren and a, um great niece a great niece thank you <laughs> which i believe we did say that last week with that they were going to be yeah. receiving their first communion so everything went off well and um it, it was, was beautiful it was beautiful the church was packed overflowing yeah. in the vestibule yeah and how do i know it was overflowing in the vestibule because you were in the vestibule i had to make a pit stop out of the <laughs> church <laughs> <laughs> and I want to talk about my it. mom wants to talk about her pit stop, right? Because I thought this is um, this. Is, well, a it's one of my um, I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna call it a pet peeve. I just know it's one of the twistings out there in the new age teaching of children. Okay, and I know that you know. Hopefully, you moms are not falling for this twisting. So we're going to talk about it. So hopefully, I don't ruffle a little bit of feathers. Well, well, I'll tell you what happened. Okay, yeah, why don't you tell everybody what happened? So, um, how Father had set it up in the church was the first communicants were at the front of the church with their family, in immediate family, with their immediate family, and of course, we have a lot. <laughs> Our family is probably the biggest in the church. Yeah. So anyway, so um, two of my daughters had two children. So, uh, and there wasn't two enough. Two children receiving first communion. Receiving first communion. So there wasn't enough room in the pew. There wasn't enough pews for all this family. So the two of them went up there with the two children receiving Rece first communion. And I was sitting at, you know, in the middle of the church with the other children who weren't receiving First Communion. And the youngest, the youngest was um, sitting there and she was uh, decided that she'd pick this moment to be a pickle. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and and uh, I didn't notice at first, right? I, I, I wasn't paying attention because I, there was just kids everywhere. Yeah. And so, and anyway, and I did tell my daughter, just so you know, I said, she, oh, I said, I know what we're discussing on the, mm -hmm. on the What is a Woman podcast. And she said, Oh, how rotten my children are. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no. I said, no, it's not what? about how rotten your children are. I said, I don't believe in rotten children, do I? I don't, nope. I don't believe in rotten children. I believe in rotten parents. Rotten parenting. Rotten should, parenting, right, yeah. I think that's what I'm always saying. <laughs> it's not the children. The children are, are learning. Yeah. If there's a, if there's a bad... And I, I fully agree with my mother on this. If there is a child that has a chronic, constant misbehaving pattern, yeah, it's the parenting. Yes, you got a parenting and you're problem. The, you're the, you have a parenting problem. The parent is the one that has to fix it. Right, right. So anyway, so uh, I mean, we should preface by saying that we're leading into this. My sister does not have a parenting problem. No, this she is doesn't. not where we're going with it. No, she does. She doesn't. She would. Have, not, well, in you, fact, when I tell you the story, you, you'll, you'll see that it so, wasn't. Yeah. Continue on. She would, you know. So anyway, so we're in the pew and I've got my missile out and I'm, I'm reading and all of a sudden I look over and here's my youngest. Granddaughter. Well, she's, she's my second youngest granddaughter. granddaughter. She's lying half in the pew and half in the oh. aisle. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have, she's doing that. And then I have another granddaughter between me and her. And I reach over and I, I'm like, what are you doing? And I pull her out of the aisle, right? 
And, I, and I'm not really paying much attention to her. You're just kind of like, get up and get in here, you know? Yeah, like, right? So so anyway, she gets, she comes in the pew and she doesn't actually address me at all, but she sticks her head in the co- corner of the two pews, right? Yeah. So she's like standing in a corner almost. At, and anyway, so I, I, I don't pay her any mind. Like she's quiet, she's there, whatever. And so I'm got my head in my missile and, and all of a sudden I'm hearing crying. Little whimpers. Little whimpers. I'm like, who is crying? Yeah. And there's a bunch of children in front of me. And I look, no, none of those children are crying. Mm-hmm. And then, and so I, I put my head down to hers. And as I get closer, because she hears me coming, the whimpering gets, gets louder, right? Yeah. yeah. And I turn around and I said, why are you crying? Yeah. <laughs> and she goes, I want my mommy. <laughs> <laughs> And I went, oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, okay, this is what I call, okay, people? This is what I call holding parents emotional hostage. Yeah. All right. So please, please pay attention to this, young mothers. If your children are crying and there's no reason for for their crying, like where we're sitting, she can see her mother. Clear as day. Clear as day. She's been with me a million times. And she sits with you every Sunday. She sits with me every Sunday, right? Yeah. yeah you know. So anyway, so I I said, I grab her by the hand very firmly mm-hmm. and we walk out of the church. I'm like, okay. We go all the way down to the basement and then I, I turned her, I said, listen. <laughs> I said, you are not going to do this. You know, I said, your mother is busy. She's up at the front and... This is not a toddler, guys. Yeah, no, this is not. She's this is not five. a toddler. She's five, right? Yeah. I said, your mother is at the front of the church. I said, and you can see her from where she's sitting. This is your sister's first Holy Communion. You do not get to go sit with your mother, right? Like what I feel like, this is the moment that my sister's getting all the attention. And I am not. And I am not, right? Yeah. So I... um. So I said to her, and she's, she's, her whimpering's getting louder. And I said to her, so then I said, okay, let me put it to you this way. If we go up and see your mother, what do you think she's going to do? Do you think she's going to open her arms and lovingly embrace you? <laughs> I said, she, don't think so, kid. <laughs> she is going to spank your bum mm-hmm. for being bad. Yeah. And she, so she looked at me. I said, do you want us to go see your mother so she can spank your bum? And she was like, no, no, you know. <laughs> and I said, come on, dry your tears, dry your tears. Let's go and let's go back up and sit in the church and let's behave properly. Yeah. Right. So we did this. Right. And I was just like, this is, this is those moments where kids. They try to pull that emotional hostage game. They play. And I'm going to tell you guys, this is not reserved to little children. No. No. They, they just have sneaker ways of doing it when they're As older. As they get older, and especially even teenagers. Yeah. If you don't do what I want you to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, not going to, I'm going to withhold my love from you. Yeah. Right? So this is why it's really, really important for you as moms to nip this in the bud. Mm-hmm. Right? They have a time period... The, the little children have a time period, and I would say it's anywhere from about a year and a half to maybe slightly over two years. Yeah. Somewhere in between there where they get to want their mummy. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a little niece, a uh, little niece, a little granddaughter that is that age. Yeah. You know, and she always comes in and she just wants mummy. Yes. Right? So she cries and she screams and she hangs on to her mother's neck like... Somebody, like she's falling off a cliff. Right. Hanging on for dear life. <laughs> and... You know, that's, that's not so, right? Uh, and okay, so I just want you to know that um, I'm not making this up, okay? Mm-hmm. This is a real legit thing that has to be curbed, mm-hmm. right? You ha- and, and, and as I said, to, I, said, I said to my daughter when she said, you know, oh, you know, my rotten children. And I said, no, no, this, right. that was normal. For yeah. her to do that is 100% normal for a child. Yeah. They have a fall in human nature. Yeah. What they're doing is they're pulling your strings yeah. on how far they can pull them. The, yeah, see to get how them much to, they to, can pull to see what they can get. See what they can get away with and how much you're willing to cave to their tears. And I mean, it's, it's, it is, 
I mean, you have to know these. We know these kids, and I could see. I mean, I wasn't there. I was in the choir, but you know, when my mom told me the story, I knew right away what she was doing. Yes, I knew right away. I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm just like, yeah, it's her sister's big day, and she's not getting attention. Right. So anyway, so I mean, to her credit, though, we came back. We sat. Yeah. You. She. You know. She. So she, well, that's she put the, her head against me for and and okay. I should point out too, like me as a grandmother. Yeah. I'm pretty. You know free willy like cookies lax. yeah like you're cookies. a lot more lax with them than you were with us. <laughs> cookies for everybody hugs yeah. and kisses and candy oh, and you pop want candy? oh you want this you want well, that let me just point it out for our listeners here we have a new sunday tradition thanks to my mother <laughs> yeah that we go after mass and the kids get slushies <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my doing <laughs> Well, but I let her have that because that's her right as a grandmother. <laughs> right. So get the kids slushy. <laughs> you know, I mean, so there's a lot of love. Like there. you're not you're not mean old grandma. So this You're not was, I'm not a mean old grandma. And that's what I'm saying. This was purely like and you have to break it down to kid mentality too. Right. Like, you know what, I don't believe that kids do this maliciously. It's just, you know, well look at all the attention. she's got the nice princess dress. I I'm saying princess dress because that's the way a kid's mind would put yeah. it. The first communion yeah. dress with the veil and the yeah. gloves and, you know. And I want some of that attention. You know, yeah. like they no, get absolutely. very like. And they do it all the time. They do it in a hundred different ways. They try to manipulate you with their tears. tears. Yeah. I mean, and in the old days, um, we had little quotes and adages and sayings that were passed down, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, your grandfather, he used to say it all the time. Like, he used to be very... And he was... I'm kind of the same as... He had this gruff exterior, but he was really... A, a soft. Soft. He yeah. was really soft. But he would say... He's an old softy. Yeah, he would say... What do you say? He'd say, what are you crying for? <laughs> I'll give you something to cry about. Stop it or I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> you know? And, I mean, this is what they used to say to kids. And we have to put into perspective that... If we've gone back, you know, to the 60s when they developed all this new age, um, uh, you know, teachings on how mm -hmm. to rear children, right? That that you're to validate feelings. Yes. That your feelings matter. matter. Yeah, You know, and to a certain extent. To you know, a certain extent, they do. do. But the other thing, and you know, I will say, and I can see it as clear as day, especially with my um, sister's kids, because I feel like, I'm just going to say my sister is reliving her own childhood a little bit with her own. She has three daughters. Yeah. And um, we have three, like my mom had three daughters. Right. A son and three daughters. Now my sister only has three daughters. But, you know, when I see those little girls, I see me. And my two sisters, you yeah. know, and I see them the way they interact and I can see the younger ones. And I never felt this way because of the, because being the oldest girl, I was always the first to do everything. Right. First right. communion, yes. confirmation, you know. Yeah. So, you didn't so but I do see my two sisters in the younger two. Right. You know, when, and especially the little one, you know, when mm -hmm. the two older girls are doing everything and it's not her turn yet. Right. You're, you, you know, you're acting in a way that it's like. Well, I got to get some attention here, you know, yes, like, and, yeah. and this is how these things go. And it's not that it's very natural, normal. I'm going to say it's very natural. So, so that's why my mom is getting to the point with, where but you have to correct, you it. have to correct it. Just like, you know, what my mom would say, it's Holly's turn. It's not your turn yet. Your day will come. Right. But your day is not, not today. today. Right. So it's okay that they're having feelings about it. That's perfectly natural. Right. Right. And and we're just using this situation as an example. And, I, and I'm using this. I'm using this situation as an example because I I can. Right. Because my because, daughter won't be offended that I'm talking about. Right. It. And because you know, you know, it's like, but it may be in your life. It may be something different. Yes. But We're just saying, you know, you have to like in this instance say it's something else down the line. But you tell your children like, you don't get to act this way. Yeah. You know, because it's not your turn yet. Today is not your turn. And it's not appropriate to act this way. Ever. No, ever, ever. Right. So, I mean, and let's talk about this for a minute. If anybody downloaded the little uh, confession book. There's lots of downloads. we got lots, lots of downloads. downloads yeah, well, there, so you might, if you flip through, that, or flip through that little download, you'll get to a spot where it says, um, did I control my emotions? Yeah. 
Emotions right? need to be controlled. Emotions need to be controlled. You don't get to throw temper tantrums. Well, and, and but it's very difficult because we are living in a world right now that is telling us that that's okay. Yes. You get to do whatever you want as long as it makes you happy. Or, that is the world we're well, living in. Well, it's also too with the the feelings in general is that is that you have to get your feelings out, out there. there yeah. You can't suppress them. If you suppress them, then that built up inner anger mm. and tension, you know? Yeah. So when your child and I is out in a supermarket, you're in the supermarket, all of a sudden your child throws them themselves down on the floor because they wanted green apples and you bought red. red. I've seen that happen, by the way. Yes. <laughs> you know? I've seen lots of things in stores and I shudder. But. And, and you're having a major, the kid is having a major meltdown over this. Mm-hmm. And the parents are like, Sonny, honey, you know? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I, and, and, you know I hate that voice. I I know you do. I hate, <laughs> I'm like I, I don't use it on the children. Well, I do sometimes. Actually, I do. Your grandkids. Yeah. You never used it on us. <laughs> we got when we get back into that car. <laughs> you're in big trouble. <laughs> It'd be like I well you guys never did that. Well, no, because we got the speech going into the store. <laughs> yeah, you guys never. I never. My had... mom would pull into the Walmart and she'd shut off the car. And we'd sit there, and she'd turn around, and she said, Now, we're going into this store. If you misbehave, if you embarrass me, if you act out, if you do any of these things, I'm not going to do anything in the store. But when we get home, <laughs> you're going to be in so much trouble. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't remember the exact words, but it was that theme. Yeah. So we knew, and I mean, I'm telling you guys, it worked. Yeah. We knew if we went into that store, and if we didn't behave or we didn't do what she asked or we've caused a scene we were gonna pay for that yes and and my mom followed through like let me be clear there was follow through there was punishment right right so you know so we knew and there's another thing that we have to think about here okay we have an epidemic of a, a little disease and i'm using air quotes when i say this yeah called bipolar yes right now i'm i don't really want to debate the legitimacy of bipolar Yes. Right, but it is the inability to control yourself to flip on a dime. Regardless, if you, yeah, it, it, to that's flip what your it is. switch, right? And is that is one second that, you're one person, the next second you're? Is the it next. a coincidence that it's such a huge thing? Because perhaps we told people they can let we their emotions have allowed run wild. our children to run wild, their emotions to run wild, yeah. from the age of two on, yeah. You know, like yeah. by by t- two years old, you have to start. Telling that child, you need to control yourself. Right. You need to rein it in. You do not get to throw a temper tantrum because you don't get your own way. Well, and really, when you think of it, if you put it in the minds and the science of the saints and and that, um, the saints had full control. Full control. Full control. And remember this. all emotions. Happiness, sadness, joy. Yes. Anger. Yes. And and, and also, too, um, they... They, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, sorry. Move on. <laughs> Moving on. Well, anyway, well, let's go to St. Paul. Yeah. Because I, one of my favorite St. Paul quotes, and this is really important, ladies. This is really important. Um, in in his, um, we and we've talked about it. It's it's from the same epistle where it's the the power in afflictions, my favorite. Right. So St. Paul, well, if we, well, if we got to oh. go down here farther. It's not. It's not the one that's in the um, missile, right? Because right. the missile only goes up to, it only goes up to, when I am weak, then I am powerful. Oh, okay. It only goes up to that. But if you go down, if you read into this, the second paragraph after that, now read that right there. This. Yeah. Okay. So quote. Behold, now the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome unto you, for I seek not the things that are yours, but you. For neither ought the children to lay up for their parent for the parents, but the parents for the children. But I most gladly will spend and be spent myself for your souls, although loving you more, I be loved less. But be it so, I did not burden you, but being crafty, I caught you by guile. Yeah. That, End quote. Oh, yeah. you didn't need that last. Yeah. Part, but right. So, but you're the part. Uh, but I most gladly will spend and be spent myself for your souls although loving you more i be loved less in loving you more i be loved less now this is what okay saint paul is telling us right too so we got to take into things a couple of considerations here um 
honor thy mother and father. Yeah. It doesn't say honor thy children. It doesn't say honor thy children. Okay. Yeah. There, there's, there's a reason for that, right? Yeah. Because parents automatic, generally speaking, I mean, there are rotten parents out there. We'll say that. But generally speaking, it is natural inclination for the parent is to love the child above all else. Yeah. I, I say, I always use the example, like if you put, if you put the child in one corner and the parent, your parent, your, okay, you're standing in the middle. You put your child in one corner and you put your parent in the other corner and you can only save one. Which one will it be? Oh, geez, mom. You know which one it will be, <laughs> right? That's a, not a nice question. <laughs> no, I know because that's, that it's the child. Yes. It's always the child, right? So because that you would, you know, you would live I mean, and die for that would, child. that be like, you know, like, I'm just saying like, you know, the child, like your parent, you're of your parent. Right. Of your parent's body, right? Mm -hmm. They're not of yours. Like your child is of your body. Like mm -hmm. you gave birth to that child. You didn't right. give birth to your parents. Right. You know what right. I'm trying to say? The parent always loves the, the child. child more than the child loves the, the parent, parent right yes so when we talk about something of um holding parents emotional hostage mm -hmm. if a child knows to get at you all i have to do is withhold my love from you mm -hmm. and they do it all the oh, time they do it all the time and they do it as they grow older too like and especially you know and the ways they do it it changes sure they may not cry and throw temper tantrums yeah, well, let's let's use let's use an, an a grown child who's leaving the faith as an example. Okay. If you don't do what I say, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Yeah, right. They make they want the child. They want the parent. They to go. Bend. They always give the ultimatum. They always give the ultimatum. They always are like, do what I do what I want you to do, or accept what I'm asking yes. you to accept, or I'm out of here. Yes, and they, they go with and that they card. expect they expect the parent to cave yes they do expect it and when the parent doesn't cave they're in shock they're, yeah they're in absolute shock but i mean before you get to this point before you get to this 20 years later yeah. you have to correct it in the beginning right i will not be held emotional hostage by your tears yeah there has to be a legit reason you're crying yeah you know and if it's because you know Joey took my toy. Okay, fine. Then Joey took your toy. Then that's not enough. That's not good enough. I know your feelings are hurt. Yeah. That's too bad. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, I, I don't know. I know how I know how I would deal with that. Mm -hmm. I would say, you don't get to cry about that. You get to offer it up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, you don't get to cry about this. You don't get, you get to offer it up. You get to give it back yeah. to Jesus. You know, and the thing here is, as St. Paul tells us, in loving you more, I will be loved less. Right. So we can't treat ourselves as as desperate parents. Right. Greedy for the love for the child of the right. child. That you're willing to throw rules and and morality and anything to the wind. Right. Just for that the love of that child. Just so to make sure that child, child loves, loves you. you. Right. And yeah. you see it like I don't you know, maybe not so much in Catholic circles, but certainly in worldly circles, you see, you know, you see these new age parents, you know, yeah. one whiff from that child that the child is not going to love them. And they cave. They, they fold cave like, like a, a cupcake, you yeah. know, and, and we can't be like that. We have to be stronger. We have to be stronger willed for the, for the sake of the child, for mm -hmm. the, you know, and that's, I mean, that as a grand, well, as a mother, I was this way, but as a grandmother, I'm this way too. Like the, the children just kind of run a little bit wild they come out here and they're everywhere and they're doing things and mm -hmm. you know i don't get so i don't get uptight about the messes i don't get uptight but if i see them do something that is a flaw in character oh yeah i i say <laughs> no you don't get to act like that yeah. you don't get to behave like that yeah right you're growing you're 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 raising children to be functioning adults yeah and jordan peterson said he said, do not allow your children to do things that will make you hate them. Mm -hmm. And not just you. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Right? Like, don't be so blinded by love. I mean, but 
it's a very it's very hard because there's this whole thing and and I may upset some people when I say this, but it is the truth, ladies. Yeah. It is the truth. And it's a hard truth. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it. Uh-oh. Nobody, I'm usually the one saying those things. I know, but I, I really do feel this way. Nobody loves your children like you do. No. And nobody cares about your kids like you do. And you have to accept that. Right. Like, and that's what, like, that's what he's saying. Like, when my mom says, and George Pearson says, don't make your, let your children do things that will make you hate them and make everyone hate them. Because you have to understand, you have a certain level of tolerance yeah. for your kids. And blindness. Other people, I'm telling you right now, do, do not. not. Yeah, they they don't, don't care. They yeah. don't, like, and it's, and I feel like a lot of parents struggle with this and they're, they're, they're always, and I'm just, this isn't about anybody in particular. It's just the world as a whole mm -hmm. are always going on about their children. Yes. Okay. And, um, you see it all the time on social media, especially, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I find it, you know, I'm, I'll just use this as an example because it's about nobody here, nobody I know. You start following somebody because say they're into DIY, right. for example, home decor, renovating their house and I'm like oh I want to follow this lady because I want to see what, how she's going to make over a home on a budget yeah and then the next thing I know I'm staring at nothing but her children yes her children won this her children did this her children do that her children are doing this and they're wonderful they're the best kids ever and then I'm like ugh you know like I, I you oh lady only you care about your kids yeah like My, you know, uh, your grandfather said once he made this. He, he said some guy was some guy he worked with. He drove a truck. My father did. He said some guy he worked with said to him, "Oh, I want to see pictures of my grandkids." He said, "No, I I got twelve of my own. If I want to see a picture of a grandkid, I'll look at them." <laughs> and I mean, it's 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 hard to say that, and it sounds so harsh when you're saying it, but it's the truth. Only you really care about your children. Yes, and I I actually used to say that to you guys so as, you, as children. So I always try, and this is for myself, I always try to keep that in mind, that I don't over um, give my kids these... Um, um, big heads? Big heads and these airs that they're so important. Right. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day... Everyone's got their own kids that they care about. Right. You right. know, so this is especially true. So you have to keep that in mind when you're, when your kids are being allowed to hold you emotional hostage and they're being allowed to carry on and they're being allowed to do this. And you expect that everybody's going to be like, oh, well, they're just, you know, they're just getting, no, they're like, yeah, and, and the kids are, yeah. And the other, I like, you know, they're I annoying. annoying. No, but they, they are, are annoying. Like children are generally annoying. And they're not, they're I not, mean, I mean, my own kids annoy me. I will say that. Yeah. they all On kids. occasion, they do. But I have that tolerance for yeah, them. My, my grandfather used to say, oh, he loved the grandchildren. My grandfather. He said, I love to see them come and I love to, to see, see them, them go. go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and he did, he all, he loved us for a good 15 minutes. <laughs> but I think, I think it's just that, that, that fine line of always making sure that you're, if you if you raise your children to be somebody that you can tolerate, yes, then generally on a whole, other people will tolerate, tolerate your them. children. Yeah, but they're not the center of their universe. Right, they're the center of your universe, and I think you have to. I think especially new age parents mm -hmm. have forgotten that. Right. That, that your children are the center of and, your and, universe, and not also the center too, of everybody I have, else's. I have to say, though, they usually get their, I'm going to use this term, head bashed in by the time they're teenagers. What like, do you mean? They cannot tolerate these kids. Who? The children that they've raised. Oh, well, yeah. The, I, okay, I think I get You know, saying. like people in general. Yeah. You know, like you, you've raised this. And now it's all coming back to bite you. Right. You mean because just with the new age parenting. With the new age parenting. Yeah. Because they don't really, you know, unless they, they don't really, it comes back. Because And the other thing that people do is they believe that they're not going to, they're not going to make all the mistakes that, that their, their parents, parents made. made. Yeah. I mean, you won't find anybody in the universe that doesn't say that. Yeah. I'm not making the mistakes that my parents made. No. I, I might make that. worse ones. I don't say that. Don't you? Do I? <laughs> I don't know. I'm do raising you? my kids just like my mother raised me. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully. <laughs> oh, we're silly. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, anyway, so that's our little uh, tidbit. Remember, um, in loving you, and actually, I have to give a shout out to a friend of mine. She was the one that showed me that. 
Oh yeah, the, the Saint Paul quote. Saint years Paul ago, quote? years yeah. ago, she showed it to me. In in loving you more, I, I will, will be, be loved, loved less. less. So remember that as Saint Paul, you have to be willing to be loved, loved less. less. You're not, and they, I mean, that's the other thing. That's why a lot of parents, I'm going to say, and me, myself included, I rem- I can remember moments where I've done this, where I've maybe not made the right decision when it comes to discipline or this, because I, I don't want to, I, I hate even saying it this way, but I don't know how else to say it. I don't want to upset them, or I don't want them to be sad, or I don't want them to, yeah. you know, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard, but you have to forget that, and you mm-hmm. have to understand that you are not there to be their friend. Right, right. And then... They're, and, and this is the thing. It sounds so rude, like harsh when you say that. You're not there to be their friend, but you're there to teach them. Mm-hmm. God gave you these children... To yeah. raise them to be saints. Yeah. To raise them so that they can get to heaven, so that they can save their soul. Uh-huh. You're not going to do that if you're constantly worrying about offending, quote unquote offending, mm-hmm. or upsetting them. Mm-hmm. You are going to upset them. Yeah. Because children are willful little beings. Little beings. And if they uh, and they what they want what they want, and you have to put that in check. And I, That's your job as a parent to not give them every little thing that and, they want. Um, and I, I've said for a long time, nothing is more manipulative than a three-year-old. Yes. They learn quick and they learn fast how to turn your buttons. And, and you know, I'm going to say nine times out of ten, they're like two steps ahead of you. Yeah. They're already thinking about what they can do next to get what they want. Yes. You yeah. know? So you, you have to... You have to mold them and move them out of that right yeah my um you have to bend their will is yeah what you my have uh, to do. my um little my youngest granddaughter is a year and a half about mm-hmm. that she's coming up a year a year and a half and she already gets out of her crib and goes right to the door where the chocolate is <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't want anything she goes right for, like and of course we just came out of easter right so there's a cupboard with chocolate, chocolate. in it so she's like oh you mean here no, not here at, oh, at her at house. Oh. Yeah, your sister says she goes over and she raises her hands and claps her fingers. <laughs> Give me the chocolate. chocolate. I want the chocolate. She's a chocolate fiend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they learn quick. But anyway, so so ladies, take heart. And um, I guess I if I have to, I can do anything. <laughs> I am strong. <laughs> right. Speaking of that. <laughs> what? What are we speaking of? I being... found another book. Oh, okay. I found another book and it had some really great stuff in it. And I wished I'd had it last week when we were talking about I am woman. Was it last I am week woman we talked? Yeah. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. No, but it was the week before because last week we talked about you're coming over the fear of the bees. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So anyway, so this book I found, it's called The Catholic Girl in the World, written 1901. Okay. And anyway, so there is a whole chapter on here called The Strong Woman. I thought you were going to say it's called I Am Woman, Hear Me Roar. I Am am Woman, Watch Me Sacrifice. Yes. (laughs) More like it. (laughs) I say, and I always said this about the men and the head of the household, um, the man should be the first to sacrifice, the first to go without, yeah, the first to die. You know, yeah, like that should be like that should be your head of the household, right? But if that's a strong-minded woman too, yes, right. That's mm-hmm. that's where you are. But here, I just want to read read a couple little things here. Let me just. Where did they go? You didn't put a page marker. In I here? did, and I put it in the wrong spot. Isn't oh that my word! It's in this. I am. I am a strong woman here, but just read that. Okay. Quote, a strong-minded woman is as cold and as stark as a piece of iron, brittle nevertheless and breaking down in place is not expected. True strength is the most subtle force, neither stiff nor unbending nor unyielding. End quote. Right. So they're talking about, um, what does it say there? What did you write? (laughs) Yeah, right? Okay. So, yeah, that's what I wrote because we've all seen those T-shirts, right? When I read that, that's what I, I thought of. It's the B word and proud. Oh, yes. There's you know, and, and if you, you see them all the if time, if you, I see it on the back of cars, I see it on T-shirts, um, you know, the female dog word, right? Yeah. So these women think they're so strong 
And um, in the book here says that um, true, true strength is neither, neither a subtle force nor stiff nor unbending. Yeah. So true strength is very bending nor unyielding, right? And that these people, they're very brittle and they break down really, really fast. fast, right? So a strong woman um, here... Because it all this also this is written in 19, 1901, 1901 you said. and it also talks about I'm I'm trying to find it here, I don't know why I didn't have it marked, but it all it talks it also talks about um, the the women and the might of right, right? The might of right. Yeah, you know the the feminism. That's this is nineteen oh one, so it's yeah, talking, but f feminism wouldn't have been a thing then. Oh yeah, no, it's in this book. Really? It's, it's all in this book. It's here. Women's right and, and women's might. Here, read that. I found it. Okay. There we go. Um, much has lately been written and still more has been said about the new woman. And however little the subject may interest individual Catholic girls, the noise it has made must, of course, have reached their ears. Some, if they be of reflective dispositions, will have formed their own opinion on the matter, and some few others may have adopted the extreme view and raised their voices in favor of woman's right and woman's might. Yeah, right. So this is, this is, uh, it talks about, you know, women wanting to vote in here. It did, but it taught oh because yeah i guess when was the uh suffragettes when they were it was in to find the 20s the right... but like oh, yeah, i mean was... this was all brewing like this was all everything was doing a smoldering burn like this is 1901 yeah, yeah. and you know the women were and not happy talking about the new woman in there the new woman in 1901 yeah right and, and her might and her right and i we have to um mention here that the catholic girl's guide tells the woman to leave her right at the, at the altar, altar of god yeah. yeah like you don't have to be right no and yes, not don't be right be no. right in your own head and walk away yeah you know leave it at the altar of god i know i'm yeah. right end of story i'm not fighting and arguing about this and i don't need you to know that i'm right yes you know um that's where the strength comes in here read this here this one here i just here yeah Quote, strong, this one-syllable little adjective consisting almost entirely of consonants surgeons suggests pleasant things. One thinks at once of a prop of something that resists as opposed to what is frail, as being vigorous in itself and good to lean upon. And the strong woman is all this and more. She must be a support to others. She must be able to resist evil. She must not break down in unexpected places. She must be vigorous in mind and morals. I had almost added in body too, and largely merciful to the foibles of her neighbor, hard towards herself, and eminently gentle to others. By self-restraint she has gauged the extent of folly in the human heart, and more especially in her own, and her force comes from utter distress to self. For when she has learned the lesson of her own weakness, then she will be strong with the strength of God. Quote. Right. Okay. So, but it talks about in there a lot of self restraint, right? Well, a lot hard on yourself. Hard on yourself. Gentle with others. Gentle with others. Right. That. I mean, that's how we're supposed to live our religion. We're supposed to apply the laws vigorously to ourselves. Yeah. And then we're supposed to give mercy to everybody else. Yeah. So if you see somebody who's doing something not so right, you th you make excuses for them. Mm -hmm. But you don't make excuses for yourself. Yeah. And we have a tendency to make excuses for ourselves. And be hard on everybody, on everybody else. else. Yeah. Well, you know, I would do this, but you know, I can't. And God knows I can't because of blah, blah, blah. Uh, so. Right? You know, but also in this book is a lot of talk of restraint. Yeah. Right? And con controlling and not breaking down in places. Where you shouldn't. Where you shouldn't. Right? Like, so, I mean, if you're home and if you're alone and you can have a little cry because you're sad. Or, you know, somebody's, you know, whatever. Somebody's died. And, and I mean, hit you. okay, you know what's so funny about this book? I'm just going to say this right now. What? This is written in 1901, right? Right. Before the age of the internet. Yeah. And breaking down in places where you shouldn't. Yeah. And how many people are having breakdowns on the internet and filming themselves? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. isn't that, yeah. isn't that wild? Like, right, right. this book is literally saying, save, basically, save your breakdowns for home and in private. You don't yeah. need to be in the middle of the... You, you I don't know, know well, where you, they would be in the middle of the well, opera you know, or something like, and have a breakdown. But And now we live in an age where it is more common 
to have a breakdown, get out your phone, film yourself, and put it <laughs> on the <laughs> Oh my God, okay because no. remember i was telling you that and i just want to share this because honestly and call me harsh call me whatever i cannot stand this i cannot stand seeing people on the internet having a mental breakdown in their car but yet they had the capacity to film and the, <laughs> the, the whatever, the strength, for lack of a better word, to pull out their phone, set it up on their dash and press record. Yeah. I've seen that so many times and it's like, I've had breakdowns. I have. Yeah. I've had moments where I'm on my bathroom floor, on my knees, yeah. crying, bawling out to God to help me. Yeah, yeah. Never has it crossed my mind to get out a phone. to get out my phone and record. <laughs> okay, when I cry, no one's seeing that. Okay, yeah. I look. I'm an ugly crier. I'm a you yeah. Know? I don't even know just, that I've seen it. So maybe a little bit. Maybe, maybe a little uh, bit. Nothing. I I mean I will cry in front of certain people, but like it's so it's to me. I I personally believe mm-hmm. that. Whenever I have a moment, and I don't even want to call it a breakdown. I want to call it a, like, I need help. Yeah. You know, I need strength right now from God. I I believe we all need those moments. Yeah. Yeah. What I uh, believe, though, is that nobody needs to see it. Yes. Except yes. for our Lord. Right, right, right. I think it's a very private, intimate moment and it, between it, you and our Lord, you know? like and it, And the self-control, too. Yeah. You have to have the self-control. Yes. The face, right? Yeah. And again, and how ironic that this t- is going to take us right back to five-year-olds in a pew. <laughs> you know, because yeah. you have to teach the children. To control themselves. To control themselves, you know, and to, yeah. you just don't get, and, and if you don't do that, how are you going to, how are these, how is anybody going to have any self-restraint yeah. ever? Yeah. In this world. Yeah. I, I, speaking of, I walked into Walmart. And this is like, I feel like the world's getting, a, well, we all know it's getting, we a, know it's getting a little We all know it's getting a little I walked into Walmart yesterday. And I'm just about to walk through the doors. And there's this screaming and swearing and like craziness going on at the other side of the doors. And I'm standing there and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on in there? I'm afraid to walk in the door, right? Right, like what What am I walking into? What am I walking into? Because we live in a world, I did kind of gently poke my head through the door. And as I was poking my head through a door, a guy was leaving. Mm-hmm. But it was very, he was unhinged. Yes, I in see every, a lot of unhinged people. Every, and you know, that's kind of scary. It's scary that there's people walking around so unhinged and you don't know when they're going to blow. And you don't know what they're capable of. Yeah. You don't know what's going, I mean, we, you know, the mass shootings, everything, you don't just don't know. This is why it's so important. I'll just go back to it one more time, moms and ladies. You have to teach the children self-restraint. Yeah. You have to teach them how to control themselves, how to control their emotions, that you don't get what you want when you want it. It. You know? I mean, you have to deal with that. And this doesn't mean you're not loving. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This doesn't mean you're not kind. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in loving you more, I will be be loved loved less less in this moment. I mean, personally... I, as I'm, I, I have, you know, the four children and I think, you know, and I'm friends with all my children. Yeah. You know, so I have. That was just really weird when you said. What? (laughs) I'm friends with all my children. I am. Well, we talk. I know, I know. It's just weird to hear you say that. Hi, bestie. (laughs) (laughs) We're very, our family gets very weird about emotional (laughs) things. Yeah, but you we, know, see, maybe we kept our emotions in check a little too well. <laughs> we don't ever let them. Out. No, that's not true. We do. I know. I'm just kidding. I'm so, teasing. but anyway, so it's just kind of funny that this is how you become a strong woman, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All of these things, you know. Yeah. If I have to, I can do anything. Yep. Right. So just just remember that, women. It's very very important. Okay, shall we get on with our book? Yeah, have we, we have about exhausted? 15 minutes. We have 15 left. minutes. Yeah, we're oh. starting on. We talk too much. Okay. 
We're starting on chapter 10. So chapter 10 is about piety. So chapter 10 from the mission and duties of young women. Quote, the nature of Christian piety and the advantages it confers are admirably set forth in those words of St. Paul already quoted. Godliness is profitable to all things, having promise of the life that, it, that now is and of that which is to come. End quote. It, me, it is a means not only of ensuring that eternal happiness, which is the ultimate end of our being, but also of obtaining for us the peace and happiness of which we are capable in this valley of tears. Right. End quote from the book. I always get messed up when there's quotes inside of quotes what I'm quotes, reading. So there's that inside quote of there from St. Okay, Paul. Okay, so, um, so what we're talking about is um, a reverse notion of that is hell in this life or hell in the next. Next, yeah. Right, so the book is basically telling us that we can have a good life here even though it's a veil of tears. Veil of tears, yeah. Right, so we're not just living for the next life. So this, this chapter is on piety. Uh-huh. So, um, I guess it's going to go into how important piety is here. Read the, read the next. Next one. This, quote, this truth should be well understood by the sex because it is their office to give to virtue its most attractive form and to awaken in man a desire of its eternal blessings by the contemplation of those which it dispenses in our present state of existence. End quote. Okay. So, what do we do here? What does so, it say? I don't know. I can't read your writing. So you have. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we have to, um, we have to, we have to make it look good. The religion is that the part, like um, that nobody actually gets away with anything, right? I was kind of blanked out when you read you, that. You were blanked out. Read you it said, again. Be natural to women. Yes. Like oh, works. okay. Right. So it, this is. <laughs> Sorry, do we have to do we have to block this out? <laughs> no, no, we're fine. Just keep going. Okay, so um, the um, the piety is something that comes very natural to, to women, women, right? So they have to make it look good in order to That's attract correct. the men, right, and everybody else in the world, right, right. They have to wear the piety well, basically. Here, here, okay. You 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 want me to read there until that spot right there? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, just checking. Okay, quote, Unfortunately, many women have a very false and contracted notion of a religion, imagining that it has reference only to the future world and exerts no influence upon our temporal condition. By a strange delusion, they go so far as to think that a pious female should not be amiable, but rather exhibit in her life the severity of the law of God than the sweetness of his yoke. Thus, the practice of religion, as exemplified by them, becomes offensive to their husband or their children and begets an, op- an op- opposition which may be the occasion of serious faults. End right. Quote. right, so she, this is what I meant when she said she has to make yeah. it look good. Right. Right, you have to make the practice of religion look good. Right. If you're severe and tense in and in your and regimented in your, you know in your religion that's just not going to be appealing to anybody it's not appealing to anybody yeah. like you have to be very amenable not to your husband not to your kids like you're just you know you're <coughs> you're you, you know you're a robot or something like yeah. a pharisee you know yeah. like you're just it's all about the law it's all about the law don't do yeah. this don't do this don't do that you know it's all yeah. about it's all about the um commandments and i mean it is all about the commandments but yeah. You, you, but you know, you have to have that amiable side to you that the religion also is loving and it is very sweet. The yoke, well, the sweetness of his yoke, the sweetness of his yoke, it's not heavy, it is sweet, mm-hmm. right? When you've embraced it, when you've learned to carry the cross, okay. So we'll continue on here. Quote Mistaking for the essentials of piety that are merely its helps or accessories, they confine themselves to a a multitude of exercises which engross much of their time and to which they sacrifice the most important duties of their position. They are greatly alarmed if they happen to interrupt their daily attendance at Mass or to omit certain prayers which they are in the habit of reciting, while on the other hand they take no note of the serious consequences that often follow from their want of vigilance and their absence from home. For instance, they seldom think of reproaching themselves with the complaints and dissensions which arise in their family and are occasioned by their inattention to its affairs, end quote. So, charity first, God's window. 
Yeah, right. Okay. So so the idea too is like is also about God's will right in here. Right. right? Especially we get very okay, we have to do this, we have to do A, B, C, and D, right? Right. And then this, the minute something happens that A, B, C, and D don't happen, we fall apart. Like we get right. very regimented. Like this is what we have planned. This is what we want to do. This is what yeah. we need to accomplish. And we have to be a little bit more chill and, and laid back. Like we have to be like God's will. And and I'm going to I'm going to reference. Well, it's that old saying, "Go with the flow," but really it should be "Go with God's will." Go with God's will. Yeah. And I, and I I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to Michelle Davis's um, little talk there about her sick children and. Mm-hmm her mice and the problems of the day you yeah. know um that's you have you have to get into the the mind of okay we didn't get to do this and we didn't get to do this but that's okay this is what god wanted me to do today yeah you know we, we, this is what god wanted you you're looking for god's windows right you know this is what god expected me he wanted me to to suffer today right he wanted me to sacrifice today. He didn't want, the, you know, like you have to be able, this is this is the acts of piety where we get to stand back and we get to say, God's will, God's will, you know, like I have no control over this. Right. So clearly it's God's will. Right. And we have to go with it and put aside what we wanted to accomplish, what we wanted to get done, yeah. all these things, right? So that the woman, she glides through life on... Yeah. Like, you know, like how, how nice is that when you, you meet a woman who just. I will say, you know. You know, goes with the flow. I'm going to say this about my mom because we had, and this will stick out in my mind forever of my, how my mom is so able to just go with the, I will say go with the flow, go with God's, God's will. <laughs> when we were kids, and I won't go into detail, but we were supposed to take this vacation. We were supposed to go to Darien Lake. Right, right. And uh, it, yeah. and we had never been, and we were so excited. And we are going to go camping or stay yeah, in their yeah. little trailers or something. And then something happened with my mom's brother, my uncle, and his kids, and they couldn't come. And we were, like the kids, us four kids, so my mom's kids, me and my siblings, were so upset. Yeah. Like, and I think we found out, like, the day before we oh, were supposed was, to go or something. It was very short. It was very short. Like, we were pretty well ready to go. Yeah. Right? It wasn't like, oh, we might do this in a couple months. And then, no. It was like, we're packed. We're going to get ready to go. Oh, the next day we're supposed to leave. Oh, we can't go anymore. Yeah. And I will never forget. And I was a little kid. I'm going to say, what, like, 10? Yeah. 9 or 10? I don't remember. But, I mean, I remember this instance. And... But. and and I do, and I just remember my mom being so like, listen, it just, we cannot go. This is more important. This is this. And we just have to go with God's will and whatever, you know, yeah. whatever you said. I don't uh-huh. remember your exact uh-huh. words. But what I do remember was your temperament and you're just like, it is what it is. We will have to either go another time. And we never did go. We never did we go. We never did go. But I just will never forget how you were so just like, because I'm an adult, and if I was if I'm excited about something and I can't do it, I can't say that that would be my, <laughs> you know, like you. And I know mm-hmm. you wanted to go. We all wanted to go. I know. Um, I, I'm not gonna say that that was any great virtue of my own in that ability to do that because I remember that. I remember it was my sorrow for my brother. Yes. Maybe you know, that's what was spurring on that this was, yeah. You know, okay, so like it wasn't, what it, was. it wasn't, I mean, I'm a lot better at God's will now than maybe I was so? then. so? Maybe that's what, I just, I will never forget your temperament that you didn't even like get excited, like not excited, excited, but I mean like you didn't get hot under the collar. Like it wasn't like, oh, we paid for this trip or we did that. Like, you know, because yeah. like, that's the other thing. A lot of adults yeah. would be like, we paid for this, we booked this. Or they, they'd this, have a meltdown we, again. They'd have a meltdown. They'd have a meltdown because they haven't controlled. And I just remember looking at you as a kid and going, why is she not having a meltdown? Yeah. Like, why is she not angry? Why is she not upset? Why is she not this? Why is she not like we're over here crying and we can't go well, anymore? Well, you know, it was a circumstance where my brother was getting raked over the coals. Right. No, I know. So it was, you know, and I couldn't say I couldn't go. Well, we're going off to have a good the time. time. Sorry you about your luck. 
No, I you know. know. And so uh, it was like, no, we can't do it. I mean, it just wouldn't have been just, charitable. It was just an instance where it's like these things happen. And if you don't hold your emotions and you don't yeah. put yourself Again, in check. Again, back to the emotions. Right? So back I'm like, to the there's emotions. all these things and, that. And even with the, the piety. Again, all these things are connected. Yes. They're all connected. You, if you're going to be a woman of strength, a woman of the, the, the Bible talks about the valiant woman all the time, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we want that for our children. Yeah. So we have to convey it. Our, we have to have it ourselves. We have to have it ourselves. And then we have to make sure yeah. that we train up our children to have it. Yeah. Right. Like, um, we're here trying to, you know, save our souls and um, get people to heaven, get our families to heaven. Mm-hmm. We have to pull it together. We have to be that strong woman mm-hmm. who is able to um, keep it all together. Yeah. And 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 to you know to be this um, this pious person. Yeah. Right. That that is looking that that is and to me always the trick to that is always God's will. Yeah, well, if you're always looking for God's will, you're looking to do God's will. Whatever God's will is and God's windows and his opening, you wait for him in his time, right? Like, you know, I go to bed at night and, you know, I don't have a job or I don't have anything. So I don't have to get, say, oh, the alarm's going to go off at seven. I'm going to get dressed and I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to go to the office. Yeah. No, I don't have any of that. So when I wake up, I mean, maybe people who do have that, like men mm-hmm. have, a lot of men have that. But so when I wake up, I have a general idea of what I want to accomplish in the day. Right. Well, you know, I want to paint this or yeah. I got paint clothes on today because we're trying to do our chicken, chicken coop. coop. Yeah. But, you know, um, if something takes me from that, I let I let the day kind of form itself. Yeah, you handle that a lot better than I do. <laughs> what? The day? The day forming itself. I'm just like, because I get up in the morning and I have a plan of what I want to do. Yeah. And then I walk in here and I got my plan coming in and, well, for lack of a better example, my sisters walk in and then I know the work, you know, like, uh, oh, everything. they're here to visit. And then I'm like, well, I had my plan for yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. It's not that I begrudge them visiting. It's just my mom is just always, my mom's the type that's like, well, we'll just, they're here now, so we'll just do this instead or something. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I'm like, I oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i know i know but i mean that was that was michelle and her her little I know, thing I right? know. that's what she was talking about right was okay all the stuff that needed to get done is not going to get done and i'm sorry tea time wasn't on the list <laughs> no, i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm a, it's just it's funny we laugh about it but uh yeah so <laughs> Because that happens a lot around here. Oh, it happens a lot around here. This where, place where my mom lives. It seems to be the drop-in palace or something. Yeah. We had um, we had a, um, a guy come today. A plum- we were putting in a bathtub. Um, it's another, a step you know, for a my grandma bathtub. so she can just step into the bathtub. Right. So we're trying to put this. Ba- and, I, and I thought my son would do it. And then he's like, you know. I'm not, I'm not a plumber. <laughs> and this seems a little com- more complicated than putting in a set of taps. So we called the plumber and the plumber came. And of course, every time we call somebody to come to this house, they walk into a madhouse. Um, yeah. And he's, you I have said, to wonder what they think when they, oh, <laughs> I said, Yo, yeah, we got a lot going on. He goes, I see that. <laughs> he said, I, I was greeted by a bunch of children and some chickens. chickens. <laughs> Yeah, now we got chickens too. Yeah, so and you know, and there's my son, and there's there's my uncle, and there's, they're standing at the. Yeah, it's it is. There's a lot going on. So you know, you have, a, and if you want to have a lot going on, you have all these people. You have to be willing to just go, go however that flow. However takes. the people go, or they come, or they don't come, or yeah. Yeah. So anyway. But anyway, so yeah, I guess that takes us just to the top of the hour. So um, we'll leave it there for today. And um, we did mention the confession booklet um, throughout the earlier in the podcast. So for those that maybe this may be their first time listening, I will put a link to that. I'm still working on that resource list and I'm going to make it my mission to get that done. A resource? Of resources like people's blogs. Oh, right, good right. Catholic resources, blogs and, and yeah, sites yeah. and and. Right. Fo- and uh, sites and stuff to support other catholics uh-huh. so and, and we did make a b video i did go out uh, yes you haven't posted i haven't it yet. I, i'll work on that too yeah you'll <laughs> work on that too where i went out and i checked um she did i 
got, went into the hive. And she did. Next yeah. week. I'm not doing it this week, but I'm going to do it again next week. And I have to go to the bottom of the hive. Uh, so that'll be even uh, more neat. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, say a prayer for my mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. But uh, anyway, so we will uh, we'll leave it there. And we will be back next week for another episode. So um, until then, um, may you all have a very blessed week. May our Lord bless you and our Lady guide you. And And as always, St. Teresa, pray pray for for us. us.